Hey guys, Mo Long here, and I'm taking a look at Batocera running on the Asus Tinkerboard. Batocera is a Linux-based distribution intended for retro gaming, and it's similar in a lot of ways to RetroPie or Recallbox, but I think it's even easier than both of those operating systems. It's a little bit like Recall Box in that you don't even have to map the buttons on your controller for most controllers that you're going to use. They're just recognized right away. And there's an emphasis on ease of use and user friendliness. But it still has a ton of different features in there. And you're going to find out of the box that it's able to run a ton of different systems. It also has the Kodi Media Center built in and there are a lot of different options like being able to toggle on different bezels and really customize the look and feel of your operating system. So in that way I really think it's similar to a fusion of RetroPie and Recallbox because you have the usability and streamlined capabilities of Recallbox, but you're also going to have a lot of different customization features like you'll find with RetroPie. I like to run this on a couple of different boards, but today we're going to take a look at it on the Asus Tinkerboard which is a really cool little single board computer that has the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi 3B plus and Raspberry Pi 3, but it has better specs than both of those boards. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to download the image. So go under download here on the Batocera website and we're going to find the Tinkerboard. So just click that and it's going to download the image for us. Now that we've downloaded our image, what we're going to need to do is mount that to a micro SD card. And so for that, I'm going to use Etcher. So go ahead and launch Etcher, and then we're going to select our image. In this case, it's the Batocera Tinkerboard image file. Hit open, and now we're going to select our target. So that's going to be our micro SD card. Go ahead and select that micro SD card. So you should have your image selected as well as your boot medium. And then go ahead and when you're done, hit flash. Just wait for flashing to finish, and when that's over, go ahead and transfer that micro SD card or EMMC module into your Tinkerboard. Here we are in Batocera on the Asus Tinkerboard. And one of the first things that you might want to do is go ahead and disable that front end music. So you're just going to launch the menu by pressing the start button. Going down to sound settings, front end music, and toggling that off like I just did. What you'll find is that most game controllers that you want to use are recognized out of the box. So I'm just using an iBuffalo Classic USB gamepad, and it's basically just a Super Nintendo USB controller. 
and it works perfectly well. No button mapping. Another thing that you're probably going to want to do is go ahead and again press start to launch the menu. Go down here to network settings and get connected to your Wi-Fi if you're using Wi-Fi. If you're using Ethernet you can just plug a, an Ethernet cable into the Tinkerboard. So what we're going to do is enable Wi-Fi and then you need to find your network. Once you found your network, go ahead and type in your password under Wi-Fi key. And there you go. We are connected to the internet. And that's going to be useful for stuff like if you want to scrape your ROMs that you have installed and add box art. So if we go under menus, scrape. We're going to be able to choose where we want to scrape from, including Screen Scraper or the Games DB. And then if you use Screen Scraper, you have a few different options for the image source. So you can go with a screenshot, a title screenshot, a couple different mixes, the 2D box, a 3D box, and you can also select the box source, get some info there as well as the logo source. You can choose whether you want to scrape ratings and scrape videos. And then if you do have a Screen Scraper account, you can enter your username and your password. It's really easy to go ahead and update. You can actually choose from a number of, of different themes here that are pretty easy to download. And similarly, you can install a lot of bezels. These are pretty cool because they give a sort of screen wrapper like you're watching on an actual console or a retro TV. And I think those are pretty fun to install. You can auto update or you can always check for an update, but we're running the latest version, so there's nothing to download. Under system settings, you can go ahead and change the language as well as toggle on stuff like power saver modes. You can select video and audio output information, and we can even overclock. One of the first things I'd recommend doing is storing your ROMs on an external device. So that's pretty easy to do from here. You just go under System Settings, Storage Device, and you can select from either a specific device. In this case, I have a 256 gig flash drive hooked up. You can choose any external. So if you hook up any external drive, that will make it the default Batusera storage device, or you can just leave everything internally on the micro SD card or EMMC module. One of the main benefits about using an external device for storage is that it's pretty easy to transfer ROMs. All your ROM folders will be on that external drive, so you can just power off your Tinkerboard remove that USB, pop it into any computer, and transfer your ROMs from there instead of transferring them to your device over the network. And by default, you'll have a few different emulator cores here, including Commodore 64, Game Boy Advance, Sega Mega Drive, NES, PC Engine, we have some ports here, including Doom. You can have Super Nintendo. And you can also just browse all games. You can add favorites. 
So what I'm going to do is load up a couple ROMs. Here we are back in Batusera. And I've gone ahead and added a number of games, including some Atari 2600 titles. I do have box art and metadata download. So you can see box art for all those games. I've also added a lot of NES games, so we'll take a look at those. And here are a bunch of Super Nintendo games, too. So let's go ahead and take a look at some gameplay. It should come as no surprise that Super Nintendo games run really well on the Tinkerboard because they're not all that hard to emulate. And the Tinkerboard itself is actually pretty capable, especially for the price. And you're not going to be able to play some more demanding PSP games, and you might not even necessarily be able to play the entire N64 library really well. But you're going to be able to play a lot of those higher-end systems way better than the Pi 3B Plus, for instance. So you're going to achieve some decent play with N6, some N64 games as well as some PSP titles. And any of these older systems are just going to run incredibly well from the Atari 2600, NES, Super Nintendo, all the way up through PS1. PlayStation games don't challenge the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and they're definitely not going to prove difficult to emulate on the Tinkerboard. So there you have it, guys. This has been Batocera running on the Tinkerboard, and I got to say, it's one of my favorite operating systems. Not only do I run it on my Tinkerboard, but uh, it's also my operating system of choice on my Rock Pro 64. Let me know what you guys think. And happy gaming.